our next speaker is Christine Gibbons. Christine is a local family doc with a master's in medical education who runs the Global Family Med, a registered charity that works with universities in Africa and Asia, getting doctors to where they're needed the most. Please welcome Christine. The current global health buzz focuses on people like Bill Gates, organizations like Doctors Without Borders, and diseases that are terrifying and contagious. A lot of proposed solutions are band-aids, and I'm here to make the case that primary care should balance these stories. Oh, pause. <laughs> the Millennium Development Goals were developed, created in uh, 2000 by the United Nations to be achieved within 15 years. Some regions, some goals are on track, whereas others related to health are not. One reason countries such as Canada are not donating close to their commitments of 0.7% gross national income, and time is up. These yellow and red bars show we're not on track where it comes to women and children's health. I'm focusing on health for this presentation because I'm a family doctor, and the sustainable development goals might focus more on prevention, primary care, public health. In Sub-Saharan Africa, child mortality isn't even at half the target. About $50 billion of aid has flowed in, but a lot of it went towards military aid, debt relief, and natural disasters. But our partners tell us how food and resources are leaving their countries. There are more Ethiopian doctors in Chicago than in Ethiopia. There's a lot of money being funneled into global health aid, mostly vaccines, HIV, malaria, leaving out the fact that a lot of people die from chronic illness or unsexy things like malnutrition, stomach flu, a lack of clean birthing centers, primary care problems. One challenge is the lack of high quality health care workers in these rural areas. They make do with community health volunteers, often illiterate women who peer educate. These programs definitely make a difference. This is a woman I met in Uganda who was teaching her village about better hygiene and what to do when their babies get sick. But it's not enough and the numbers prove that. The poorest fifth of the planet is making do with 2% of the world's physicians. This slide shows Africa as a sliver when it comes to doctors per population. The universities recognize this. Some friends in Tanzania are teaching the same class at med school three times a day. Then, 80% of doctors are living in cities in most countries in Africa and Asia, whereas most people there live outside of cities. So a family like this might walk for three or four days to get to healthcare. Doctors aren't living where people need them the most. Sometimes they move to Chicago. Rural African doctors don't have an easy task. Imagine you're smart, so you leave your village, and you get to med school, you train for 10 years, and the government mandates you back to a village. There you have no electricity, your health clinic barely has medicine, let alone an x-ray machine or a specialist to consult. Why would you stay? The story I hear from a lot of my friends is that they get very attached to people in these communities. On the right is a physician friend of mine in Kenya who loves doing home visits. She gets to know families and their dynamics, delivers babies, and she becomes an integral part of life there. In most countries where I've been volunteering, physicians are encouraged to specialize in internal medicine, pediatrics, obstetrics, but when people seek out care, they would often rather prevent rather than cure. Or they might have a cough, but want to also talk about their children or their mood. They actually need a family doctor. <coughs> Most of you would have a family doctor who can treat almost any problem. Half the doctors in Canada are family doctors. In many other health systems, there's very few well-trained generalists who could treat anything in the body. They make do with medical students who are freshly graduated and sent to rural areas until they can come back to specialize. A lot of aid has been focused on disease as well. If you have tuberculosis in Uganda, you can't get funding for treatment. But HIV positive patients can. So TB patients are seeking to contract HIV in order to survive. Targeting disease can create unintended consequences. In development, we talk about vertical aid being one disease, one region, one vaccine, and a horizontal approach is treating a community or a patient or a health system in a holistic way. 
We need global health effort to be more balanced and target both directions. Good health comes from a good health system focused on primary care. We need to get physicians engaged in communities. These are family medicine residents in Laos, where they are immersed in village life for six months, and they come away bursting with stories, not just about clinical medicine, but about the sick babies that survived and they watched grow, or a public health project like building toilets. They're eager to return. This is a rural training site in Nepal, where medical students are taught by family doctors who can handle almost anything public health problems, infectious disease, obstetrics, surgery. Students who study here gain a lot of confidence. The next step needs to be scaling up. Get students from rural villages into med school, train them to become the kind of caregiver that the community needs, one that fits the regional context. Show them how to sustain their family in a rural area and give them incentives like continuing education and recognition so they stay. Everybody deserves good quality health care. Everyone needs a practitioner who is knowledgeable, cares about their community, works where they live, and can treat most problems. The World Health Organization and many international bodies recognize this, and many of us hope the 2015 Sustainable Development Goals support the idea. Despite the billions of dollars fed into health care, things like malaria and HIV, mothers and babies are still dying due to lack of access to primary care. This is Moses. For $8,000, you can train a family doctor who's dedicated to a rural community for a lifetime. And this is why we started a not-for-profit aimed at strengthening health systems. We work with universities overseas to make sure their training is community-focused, getting doctors where they're needed most. We pay tuition, provide rural transportation, we are a Global Family Med Foundation, and here's where you can find out more. Thanks. Mm -hmm.